I'm just buying some time because Jeff broke the camera. Sorry, Matt. Everybody's getting inside Craft Show. We're outside. That probably means nothing to you, but it's been blazing hot. And finally, the bearded one and I can stand outside and not sweat our jibblies off. Today, we're gonna to talk about using a spherical lens in anamorphic mode, what it looks like. So to test that, we've got a 50 mil SLR. Where'd the lens go? We got a 50 mil SLR. <laughs> yeah, hold it in place. We got a 50 mil SLR Magic, and then we're gonna use the Leica 12 to 60 set at 50 mil, and we're gonna see what they look like. We'll talk about the process in post as well, because it is obviously square. I'm shooting this in anamorphic right now on the Leica 12 to 60 because that'll get asked 10 times. But it is the Leica 12 to 60. All right, so what we have is an SLR Magic 50 mil anamorphic lens. Uh, we're shooting at 6K. So as you can see, it killed the monitor. So we're shooting at 6K and then this is just the vlog camera so I can record audio and look at you people. Anyway, so here is the 6K images with the color chart. You can kind of see the distortion in the background. This is 6K, de-squeeze, the whole thing. All right, to throw one more lens into the mix, we have a Summicron 35 with a PL adapter mounted, uh, still shooting anamorphic. So we've got the 6K anamorphic Sumi 35, which makes it close to like a 47 or something. Not totally sure on the map, somewhere in that space. Uh, and then I'll do the walk again. Here we go. Okay, so now all we have is the Sumi 35. That's what you got on the box right now. Um, it's going to, I imagine, zoom in looking at these 4.3 spherical lenses. Uh, it's going to zoom in uh, on the timeline. So a 35 is really gonna feel like a 70, I think. Okay, so now what we have is we have 6K anamorphic on a spherical lens, a 4.3 lens. Should be kind of a square image. Uh, and then, of course, we have the vlog camera running for audio. Here's the color chart, and I'll make the walk. Let Jeff do what he does. So, so one of the things about this is that we're actually shooting this content, this anamorphic content, on the Leica 12 to 60. We're at 50 millimeters, Leica 12 to 60, 50 mil to match that of the SLR Magic. So you can kind of see a comparison between DSLRs or between lenses rather, um, between the anamorphic, a native anamorphic, and a spherical lens or round lens on the 6K settings. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so let's take it into the edit bay. Uh, actually. Let's shoot a distortion chart and then we'll take it to the edit bay because I think you'll find the distortion chart pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Which camera? Which camera? I'll show you trolls. Oh, hello there. So uh, I'm being lit by a new hive light, the Wasp 100C. Let me know how it works. I've been having a little bit of a challenge with it, but it could have been operator error. Who knows? I'm trying to hook my phone up to it. Anyway. So the footage itself uh, is pretty amazing to me when you kind of consider the idea that whatever lens you're shooting is gonna be obviously bigger on the timeline. You're gonna have to reframe it essentially when you drop it in. And looking at those distortion charts is certainly telling of that. So let's kind of take a look at these. So the distortion charts themselves, what's really fascinating about the distortion charts is here's the anamorphic ones first. And we can kind of see that you have a nice anamorphic square. This is not de-squeezed. This is a raw anamorphic image. 
it switches over to the squeezed image and you can see it's filling the fr frame pretty well from top to bottom. So the next shot we have in is the Lumix 12 to 60. We dropped the 12 to 60 in, that's dropping it raw on the timeline. And when you see it raw on the timeline, you can see how zoomed in it is. And I'll show you how that looks when we go to the next clip, which is going to be poof. That is dropping it onto the timeline and scaling it back to, I think I'm around 60. It gives us full frame from top to bottom, but it does not fill the entire image. So it gives us that four by three sort of square, if you will. And then we're gonna switch over and show what full frame is, and that's set at 77. Now I'm working inside of Premiere Pro, so that's the scaling numbers. So 60 is the raw data, and 77 is filling the frame. You can see that the the it doesn't match the 50 on the anamorphic whatsoever. You can obviously see it's a wider angle because it is an anamorphic lens, but it does create for a cool effect. And frankly, I find the sharpness to be pretty awesome. I mean, the image itself is pretty clear and, and solid in that space. So then we're gonna jump to a Summicron 35. You'll see a jump in that 35. So again, we're native on the timeline here. This is the just dropping it right in and at 100%. And we'll switch over here to the Native one, you can see a lot more of the, uh, of the frame. This is using a 35 with a PL adapter, which really makes it like a 40 something. Um, it's 1.6 or whatever it is. You guys know all that stuff, I whatever. That's why I don't use speed boosters and junk, I just get confused. Not that smart, nor is Triceratops here. Hey! Uh, that was my ventriloquist moment. So anyway, so then we can see it here, and then we're gonna go to filling the frame. Once again, filling the frame you get what I would call roughly a 50 uh, based on knowing where the lens was. So that 35 ends up looking like a 50. So what's great about it is you're getting this really intense clarity. You're getting a 6K image that you do have some leeway to play with. I mean, if you think about the fact that I'm at 77, that gives me another, what, 23 uh, pixels or whatever percent or whatever measurement, whatever metric uh, Premiere is using. It gives me 23 of those to reframe or adjust. I can punch in, I can, I can, push it a little further. You're gonna have to be very conscious of the lensing when using 6K uh, anamorphic fun functionality with the spherical lens that gives you a 4.3 image. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share. There's stuff floating around everywhere. Tell us what you think about the new set, the Hive light, the spherical footage. Throw it down there in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for the live show, which would be Tuesdays at 2 p.m. in case you don't know that, or you watch this on a Wednesday or Saturday, or Friday. If you're ever on set and you have to deal with something and you want to tell Jeff what lens you want, let me show you how to do it. Five, one, oh. What does that mean? That's right, 510 millimeter. It's actually this. You just point like this. So then you know 60, 60. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. So if you want to get a lens on set, so if I tell Jeff, let's shoot this bad boy with the 12 to 60, I'll just do the 60 and he'll figure it out. That's his problem. <laughs>